Hello, listeners. Uh, welcome back to Cobb's Corner. I'm your host, Morgan Cobbs. Today we're going to be reviewing the movie Thor. Now, Thor was the introduction to the cosmos, to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Like When you say universe, it's not just the Earth. There's space and there's the cosmos. So this was the first film that brought us outside of just the realm of Earth, and more on the term realm later on in the episode, and introduced us to Thor and to, to his home, Asgard, and all the char- the main characters of Asgard, and, and um, also the different connections within the MCU. We're starting to see all the uh, connectivity, so that's what we'll be reviewing today. Um, I guess disclaimer for this episode and all the future episodes that this is simply just my opinion. This is, you know, it's simply just, uh, you know, my, my opinion in terms of the movies and where they stand in, in comparison to other films. Um, so, yeah, we'll be reviewing Thor today. And as always... Uh, spoiler warning for those of you who have not yet watched the movie. You can find it on Disney Plus. Along with most of these Marvel movies, you can find it on Disney Plus. So let's just jump into it. Stay tuned. Thor <coughs> starts off being told sort of out of order. Like we open on. Uh, Puente Antiguo, New Mexico, which is a town that literally translates from Spanish to Old Bridge, Puente Antiguo, Old Bridge, and we follow, (coughs) excuse me, um, Jane Foster, who is an astrophysicist, played by Natalie Portman, along with her intern, uh, Darcy Lewis, who is played by Kat Dennings, and... Dr. Eric Selvig, played by Stellan Skazgard, as they are chasing astronomical occurrences and, I guess, electrical storms and things of that nature, and they end up chasing a storm, and they end up unintentionally hitting uh, a man who, you know, who, who seemed to be just out there, end up hitting someone and uh and that's pretty much where we're left where we're left off and then camera just pans out and we end up going to asgard and in asgard which is a realm that exists in space where there's like a huge you know palaces it's almost you know shakespearean almost and and uh, we see Asgard, and before that we also see uh, the year 965 A.D. in Tronsberg, Norway. We see the Asgardians at war with Jotunheim. Jotunheim, which was home to the home to the Frost Giants, the Frost Giants who almost plunged mankind back into a new ice age, and so Asgard. They were the freedom fighters who protected the Earth from the threat of Jotunheim and drove the, Jot- drove the ice giants back to Jotunheim and, and removed the source of their power. And even Odin, who's king of Asgard, he had lost an eye during that battle and he had rescued an infant, an, an infant baby and adopted him. Um, This is uh, Thor's adopted brother, Loki. Uh, More on him later. And then as he's telling that story to his his sons, he tells Thor, his biological son, and then Loki, his adopted son, that both of them were were born to be kings, but only one of them will rule. So... 
So, so then we cut to Thor's coronation as king, which is interrupted suddenly by a few frost giants who make their way into Asgard and almost steal. And their plan was to steal something from the treasure room. To probably steal the source of their power from the treasure room on Asgard. They didn't steal anything, and Odin does not want to retaliate because he has a truce with King Laufey. And, you know, Thor, who, mind you, is not king yet, he's still thinking as a warrior, he's thinking, like, Laufey just broke your truce, we need to retaliate, we need to unleash hell on um, Jotunheim. And so Thor goes AWOL, he and his friends, uh, Lady Sith and the Warriors Three, they invade Jotunheim, un unauthorized to, to invade Jotunheim. They invade Jotunheim, they have a skirmish with the Frost Giants and with Laufey, and this is where Loki finds out that he's adopted and that he's actually an ice giant, that he's actually, that he's actually an ice giant who was adopted. And then Odin shows up, ends the skirmish, and pretty much the truce with Laufey is broken. Laufey says, you'll have your war, and Odin takes everyone back to Asgard. But he then, after some really like almost Shakespearean dialogue, banishes Thor to Earth for being so reckless. And you know, he says, I take from you your power, I take from you your hammer, but then he leaves an enchantment on the hammer saying, like, whosoever holds this hammer, if he be worthy, shall possess the power of Thor, sends the hammer to Earth as well, and then Thor crash lands on the Earth, ends up getting hit by a car, and we all know how this ended up. So then, yeah, you know, he ends up in the hospital and ends up trying to escape, and actually ends up escaping, and then ends up getting hit by Jane Foster's car again. So then they take him in, they give him, they take him in, they go get him breakfast, and you know, he kind of explains everything, and they think that this guy is crazy, and um, they think that he's, you know, a little uh, delusional, and they then go over and find Thor's hammer, which has become a town attraction. Everybody's trying to lift Thor's hammer. And uh, if you remember from Iron Man 2, Thor's hammer we saw in the post credit scene of Iron Man 2. And on top of that, we see Agent Coulson say, Sir, we found it. That exact same scene. Agent Coulson in Iron Man 2 saying that he was being transferred to New Mexico. So this happens around the same time as both Iron Man 2 and The Incredible Hulk are two previous films. So you're starting to see kind of the connections with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And then S.H.I.E.L.D. acquires Jane Foster, like her entire lab, all her equipment, all her research. They acquire it. And, um... Dr. Eric Selvig, he says how he knew this scientist, who he does not mention by name, who was the pioneer in gamma radiation research, S.H.I.E.L.D. showed up, and that scientist was, that was never heard from again. He's, of course, referring to Bruce Banner, who we met in The Incredible Hulk. So S.H.I.E.L.D. shows up, they acquire all the uh, research and all the data, and then Thor breaks into this facility that they've built around the hammer because now shield they're studying the hammer like is there going to be any activity and things like that she, uh, thor breaks into the facility uh, but then he's he tries to lift the hammer and he cannot he's realizing that he is still unworthy so he's detained but then he's busted out he's i guess pardoned by the um scientist um dr er eric Selvig, he kind of gets him out of there giving him the fake fake identity and having like a cover story and then just kind of telling him he's you know free to go and then back 
back in Asgard, you know, Loki, he confronts Odin about his, uh, his true heritage, which is a frost giant. And Odin said that he hoped that one day he could unite the two kingdoms. He could unite Asgard and Jotunheim. That's why he had decided to adopt Loki as a baby. And, you know, Loki kind of takes offense to this and says, you know, am I just another one of your relic to be stored away until you have use for me? And then this forces Odin into his Odin sleep. And so Loki sits on the throne as, I guess, king pro tempore, you know, temporarily the king in the absence of both Odin and Thor. And he lets the frost giants into Asgard because there's more than one way in and out of Asgard, not just the Bifrost. The Bifrost is the main way in and out of Asgard to travel through the, the nine realms. Bifrost, it's like a giant rainbow bridge controlled by Heimdall, who's the overseer of the Bifrost, and he sees everything. But apparently he missed the um, frost giants coming into Asgard the first time, so... Loki, being the king, lets a few Bifrost, well, goes to Jotunheim and makes a deal with King Laufey, who's actually his biological father, and tells Laufey that as king of Asgard, he will bring in, bring in Laufey and a few other frost giants. They will have the opportunity to kill Odin at where, right where he sits, well, where he sleeps. And then Loki is just such a trickster, because like, he brings the frost giants into that room where Odin's sleeping, and he then turns his back on the frost giants and ends up killing Laufey. So, you know, meanwhile, on, on Earth, um, you know, Lady Sif and the Warriors Three, you know, Thor's friends, they come to Earth to bring him back to, to bring him back to, um, back to Asgard and to, to end his banishment. Although Thor at this point thinks that his father is dead because of him. So he thinks that his banishment is permanent. That was a lie told to him by Loki. But, you know, Lady Sif and the Warriors 3, they're like, we're ready, we're ready to bring you back. And then he's like, you know, I can't leave. And then the Destroyer shows up with the Destroyer, which is uh, the same machine that they use, the same, I guess, robot that they use to kill the frost giants that had invaded the treasure room the first time. Loki sends the destroyer to this town in New Mexico and unleashes it on that town and, you know, the Lady Sif and the, Lord and the Warriors 3, they try to fight it off, but then that doesn't work. And Thor, in his mortal form, no hammer in hand, walks up to this destroyer and says, uh, you know, Loki, I know you can hear me. If there's anything I've done to offend you, I apologize, but please spare the lives of these innocent people. Take mine instead. And then the destroyer turns off, you know, and it looks like the destroyer's walking away, but then, he, you know, the destroyer gives Thor really, really painful... I can imagine, um, backhand. So Thor is knocked down, but then this proves him worthy of, of Mjolnir, which is his, his hammer. Proves him worthy of Mjolnir again, and then he raises his hand, and Mjolnir flies from that crater all the way over back into the town, like about 50 miles, back into the town of Puente Antiguo, he, he grabs Mjolnir and takes up the mantle of Thor again, you know, he is, you know, the mighty Thor, he's got his armor back and everything, and he is able to defeat the destroyer once and for all, and, you know, liberate this town, and he then meets with Agent Coulson and agrees to that the two of them will work together to defend Earth from the other realms and from whatever threats may be out there in the cosmos and to, re 
return all the research and data back to Dr. Jane Foster, who's going to need all of the research and data um, as they continue to research what threats are out there in the cosmos. Thor returns to Asgard. He agrees that he will come back to Earth for... He will come back to Earth for, um... For Jane. Meanwhile, Loki's plan is to unleash the full power of the Bifrost on Jotunheim to wipe out that entire planet to kill pretty much an entire race. But then Thor stops him, and the two of them have a skirmish on the Bifrost, and then Thor, he destroys the Bifrost with his hammer. He, like, literally breaks that entire bridge and just destroys it. So now there is no more Bifrost. There is no way on. There is no way um, from Earth to Asgard or from Asgard to anywhere else in the cosmos. There is no Bifrost. So... And then Odin wakes up out of his sleep. He wants to, you know, stop the brothers from fighting and save them, bring them back home. And, you know, Loki then lets go of the staff and gets sucked into a black hole. Who, and he, seeming, he seemingly dies. And, uh,. You know, and then Thor realizes that he is not ready to be king, that he still has much to much to learn. So this movie wouldn't be so much a transformation for Thor, but Thor's realization would be a humbling moment for, for Thor, realizing that he is not worthy of he's not worthy to be king yet. That he still has much to learn. And Loki is seemingly dead. And uh so then, you yeah, know, the movie ends with, you know, a shot of, you know, Eric Selvig and Jane and Darcy working in New Mexico and all is well in Asgard, all is well on Earth as of now. And in the post credit scene, we see Nick Fury bringing Eric Selvig to uh, what looks like a, se a secret bunker. And he shows, he says, um, history tells us one thing, legend another. Le legend usually tells us one thing, history another. Every now and then you find something that belongs to both. He shows him this cosmic cube. And although it looks like Loki is controlling Selvig, but Loki says, well, I guess that's worth a look. And then Eric Selvig says, well, I guess that's worth a look. So now they're going to start to study this cosmic cube. Whatever th this cosmic cube is. So that's kind of a <laughs> cliffhanger. We'll have to wait and see what happens with uh, this, this cosmic cube. So Thor is the movie that introduced the MCU to outer space. Space will be a very um, important factor going forward in future films. This was also the film that introduced us to Thor. This is Thor's origin story. This is his kind of an introduction to the MCU. And our introduction to Asgard and the Nine Realms. We will see a few of the Nine Realms uh, in future future films. This was the film where we started to see the connectivity. We see Agent Coulson. He shows up in Iron Man 1 and 2, and then Thor. And Nick Fury has shown up also in Iron Man's 1 and 2, and the post credit scene of Thor. So we're starting to see the connectivity, we're starting to see the framework of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which is all going to come together in the future. But as of now, we were introduced to Thor, to Loki, to Odin, to a few of the main characters that will show up in other films going forward. So this
this was overall I, I think it was it was a pretty good film i think thor is like a solid like b tier film again let me know in the comments what tier you would rank thor like i think it was good you know it, it get it his story it gets better you know, i don't want to reveal too much but it gets better but <laughs> as far as origin story movies go i think it was pretty solid uh, our next film will be Captain America, The First Avenger. And this film is going to go back in time. We are going back to about the year 1942. And this film is going to follow Steve Rogers, played by Chris Evans, and his origin story as the incredible uh, as the <laughs> excuse me as uh, his origin story as uh, Captain America the, the first Avenger and hence the title Captain America the first Avenger and we'll be introduced to uh, Bucky Barnes played by Sebastian Stan and and 